Hi everybody, thanks for tuning in. You're watching the Up Place Church broadcast. My name is John, this is my dad, Pastor Ed. We're so grateful that you decided to tune in today. Listen, we're on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. Go ahead and uh, like us on all of those platforms and uh, like this video, subscribe, all those different buttons, the bell for notifications, whatever you wanna do. And uh, we're just so grateful that we have people tuning in, getting the word in them. And we love to hear testimonies of how the Word of God is working in your life. So if anything like that is going on in your life and you're like, oh my gosh, i got to share it with somebody. Amen. Reach out to us through those platforms. Or you can call us at our office number. It's 760-877-0680. And um, you know, reach out to us and we'd love to talk with you because we're starting a brand new church in Escondido in the North County area of uh, San Diego. So um, we're looking for people who want to partner up with us, who want to help start the work, the ministry that we've been called to start in that area. There's so, the harvest is so great there. Amen. But we need laborers, as the Bible says. The laborers are few. But we believe that you guys are out there, that God has uh, connected you with us, and we're just reaching out like, hey, you know, we want to partner with you. So go ahead and reach out to us that way. And um, we're also planning on doing some evangelism in the area as well this summer. So we don't have dates set yet, but also reach out to us about that. And um, we're getting a team together for that as well. So, um, yeah, that's all the announcements I have. So um, without further ado, I'll hand it over to Dad. Thank you. Praise the Lord. We're going to be getting into the Word today, and we're going to teach along the lines of faith and uh, the title of the message today is faith comes by hearing and Amen. not by seeing faith comes by hearing but not by seeing interesting we look to the word of god uh this is solid bible teaching people say well i don't know about you know believing something i can't see yeah and i say well you know i just sat down on this chair but i didn't see for sure if it was going to hold me up. I had faith that this chair would hold me up. Mm -hmm. Now, that's purely a natural analogy, but there's a lot of things about faith that we don't understand. Yeah. We understand according to Hebrews chapter 3, actually, well, actually chapter 11, verse 3, that by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. Yeah. There's a lot of things about faith that we will not understand, but the revelation just keeps on coming. Amen. Amen. Yes. Revelation of faith keeps on coming. Yes. Romans chapter 10, verse 17 says, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. How's it come? It comes by hearing. Yeah. And it comes by hearing by the Word of God. In other words, God's Word brings faith. Yes. And we understand that uh, there's things that we uh, do by uh, the natural realm, like we trust people, like... Mm -hmm. When I go to work, at the end of the work, work week or the work cycle, there's a two-week interval, well, I go there to get my paycheck. Mm -hmm. But that whole two weeks, I'm not worrying. My, God, I hope they have enough money to pay me, you know. <laughs> I have faith. You wouldn't work there. If they did. You wouldn't work, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have faith in the natural faith. Yeah. How much more should we have faith that God's going to reward us Amen. if we diligently seek Him? And that's also in chapter 11, of, uh, I believe it is in... Uh, Chapter 11, verse 6, where it talks about he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. That's a definition of faith. Yeah. The word rewarder, if you look at it in the pure Greek, the Greek actually means, uh, it means to pay wages. So he's, huh. he's, he's a rewarder or he's one that pays wages to those that diligently seek him. Yeah. So if you're doing something for God, Jesus said like this in Mark 10, 29, no man has left houses, lands, Father, mother, brother, sister, etc. Mm -hmm. That shall not receive a hundredfold in this life. Amen. Amen. And to come eternal life with persecutions. You know, we don't want to read the persecution, but I'm the kind of yeah. guy I read everything in the Bible. Indeed. I don't leave the persecutions out, so I'm not in like dismay. Like, why am I getting persecuted? Because it's the Bible. Yeah. Amen. But it says if you if you preach the gospel, if you're doing anything for the gospel. Uh, last week we talked about. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 58, about how it talks about uh, the previous verse about, now thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, brethren, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, 
knowing that your work is not in vain. Yeah. Well, he's going to make sure that you're taken care of. Amen. It's not in vain. Yes. You might be an usher at a church. You might be a singer. You might be taking care of people in the, in, in the children's. You might be a nursery worker changing diapers. Mm -hmm. It's not in vain. God will reward you. Amen. Amen. That's part of faith, actually. I didn't, yeah. I didn't want to go this way, but it looks like the Holy Spirit's having me go this way because there's people out there listening to this thinking, well, what's the use? Well, we have to look at the Word of God. We have to see whether God says that, you know what? Your work and labor of love is not in vain. I will reward you. Amen? Praise God. That's good. So, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are seen are eternal. Think about it. Mm -hmm. Title of the message is Faith Comes by Hearing, Not by Seeing. It doesn't come by, by seeing. It comes by hearing. Amen? Amen. And what does it say here? While well, we look not at the things which are seen. How many people know it's very easy for all of us to look at the things that are seen? Mm -hmm. We can see the bills maybe mount up. We can see certain symptoms in our body. We can see certain looming, ominous uh, clouds of war that we are seeing here today. Mm -hmm. We can see a pandemic and its effect. We can see all these terrible things happening with gender teaching of our kindergartners. I think this is looking pretty bad, but you know what? We got great faith because we serve a great God yes. and this word is fully great with the word. I should say it like this. The, the word of God is, is, is great with faith. Yeah. And if you have God's word, you can pray those things and they are stayed off. Yes. Are we not the restraining force, force in the world that yeah. Paul talks about in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7? We're the restraining force. We're keeping the devil at bay because of our faith in God and our faith and our prayers. I don't yeah. care what it looks like the school people are trying to do our kids. We are changing that. Matter of fact, we are changing it right now by prayer. Yes. We're changing a lot of things. This war in Ukraine, because of the prayers of the saints, this is amazing. Ukraine is winning that war because wow. we're praying the yeah. last three months now. And there's supernatural things going on. You don't hear about it because you're not going to hear it on the news. Matter of fact, you all need to turn the news off if you're doing that. Yeah. But God is doing great and mighty things in this world right now because people are grabbing hold of His Word and believing it and acting on it yeah. and praying the Word of God out and expecting God to change things. Because we're right. not moved by what we see. We're no. moved by only what we believe. And what we believe is what we hear. Because yeah. believing comes by hearing. Amen? Yeah. Amen. I didn't go to. I didn't mean to go on that route, but I'm telling you this. I'm getting excited about this. I yeah. tell you, you'll never. You've never really preached the gospel till you preach faith. Yeah. I'm the happiest when I teach on faith because that's the <laughs> yeah. victory that overcomes the world. That's right. Amen. First John five four. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Yeah. And he could have said love, which is the greatest virtue, but he didn't. Right. He said faith because we need to know what faith is, and to know what faith is, we have to get into this. Praise God, praise this God. word, and know yes. that we know that we know that He cannot lie. That if He yes. says whatever He asks the Father in My name, He will do it. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is that thing that we don't see, but you know what? By the eye of faith, you can see it. Yeah. Mark eleven thirteen. if you read there, Jesus coming out and he's uh, walking and he's very hungry. Have you ever been very hungry? Mm -hmm. People think Jesus floated around on some cloud. Uh, Jesus was never hungry. No, he was a human being. He had a heart. He had lungs. He had kidneys. He had digestive tract. You know, he had a pancreas. He had a brain. He mm -hmm. had a heart. Mm -hmm. What else? All the organs. Skin. He was flesh and blood. Amen. Yeah. And he got hungry. And it says yeah. here that <clears throat> when he came to Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing afar, or excuse me, seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on, on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season of figs. So in response, Jesus said it. Now think about it. This fig tree is talking to Jesus. Yeah. I'm not giving you any fruit. I'm not giving you any food to eat. But Jesus mm. notice says he responds to it. And he said, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. Now they started going to, uh, to Jerusalem. And he, by righteous indignation, kicked out all the people that were making his house 
of prayer, a den of thieves. But then they come back and it says, they uh, went out of the city and now in the morning as they passed by, verse 20, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter remembering said, look, Rabbi, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. Jesus said to him, have faith in God. Notice it was withered away at the roots. Think about it. When you look at a tree, you're, you're not admiring the roots. You don't even see the roots. I'm mm -hmm. looking right out our window here. We got a beautiful tree here with beautiful purple flowers on it, the branches, the leaves. But I'm like, I would say, wow, those are beautiful roots. No, uh -huh. I can't see the roots. The roots are un underground. Roots are the same as the unseen realm. Faith is that part of our uh, being that delves into and brings forth answers from seemingly impossible situations. Yeah. The roots that Jesus saw the next day were dried up. And then they see the roots. And I can like it like this. I know in children's church, they used to have object lessons a lot, you know. Yeah. And I can see Jesus standing right by this tree. And here he has a perfect object lesson. You see this, folks? You see this, Peter? You see this, James? You see this, John? You see these roots here? I say you just have faith in God. For whosoever shall say, verse 23, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not down his heart, but believe those things that he says shall come to pass, you'll have what you say. Yeah. So he spoke to those, those, uh, that tree, I should say, and he didn't turn around about 30 feet away when he looked back. He didn't look back at the tree. Mm -mm. He wasn't looking at the leaves. He wasn't looking at anything, uh, you know, drying up. A hundred feet later, he didn't look back again. He didn't keep on looking back. He, never, he just went straight on to Jerusalem. He has, he's a man on a yeah. mission. He's going to clean up the house of God. <laughs> never looked back. He spoke. This is, a, this is a lesson. You don't look back. Once you speak faith, it's done. Can't change it. It's been spoken. I cannot, I, I, I've done this before in my life where I've spoken to certain things and I think that's not going to come to pass, but I don't pay any attention because once you speak by the faith of God, it's done. It cannot be reversed. Right. Unless you decide to reverse it, which I'm not going to do. And I have some stories I could tell you, which I don't have time to get into. But Jesus didn't look back. Yeah. Sometimes I think Christians look and feel, is it, is it happening? I can't yeah. feel anything. Oh, I, I know, it looks like it, it is getting worse. It's getting worse out there. No, it's getting better because we're looking at the unseen. That's Faith good. looks at the unseen, folks. Now, this good. is going to help some of you out there. I know we maybe have 100, 200 people watching this, but you know, you need to take heed to what the Word of God is saying. We all do. Yeah. Faith is something you arrive at, you grow into. Mm -hmm. And everybody's at different levels of faith. Some are way up here, other people. But you know what? There's no need to stay down here and get the devil beating you over the head. Faith is the victory. Amen? Amen. Now, I'm not done yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go longer than I thought, but if you hang on, we're going to get into this a little bit deeper. Yeah, this is good. It says, when you speak... Your words go into the unseen realm. Yeah. Now think about it. What's the unseen realm? Well, one thing that I came, the Holy Ghost came to me, the future is the unseen realm. Yeah. So when you speak in faith and you're believing God, like we're believing God for this ministry that we have, mm -hmm. there's no, no fruit maybe we can see much at all. Mm-hmm. But we just believe that our words that are going into the future are producing things that we desire because we put, we're putting God's ministry and God's will for our lives first right now. Yes. And whatever he wants us to do, we're going to do it. But it always takes faith. And like somebody said, and it's in the Bible, whatever God calls you to do, it requires faith. God doesn't all of a sudden lay out the red carpet, go, oh, boom, there's everything for you. Yeah. Well, that's something <laughs> that's not, that's the opposite of faith. God takes pleasure in that knowing that his sons and daughters are walking things out by faith. Amen? Amen. So, <clears throat> Jesus' words went to work on the unseen realm. Notice that. He spoke to the fig tree. Cursed be you. No man eat fruit of thee forever. Now that kind of gives you a window into the mind of God on what he thinks about lack. Yeah. He cursed it. Yeah. And some people at all, you know, I lived in a, I went to a denomination that kind of like deified poverty yeah. or like it was a virtue to be poor. <laughs> but those people weren't even poor. The people that were ministering, they weren't poor. They had nice cars. They, something and something's not right here. 
And you know, when you listen to Jesus and get something from Jesus, you say, hey, he is talking to lack and he cursed it. That's yeah. the worst thing you can do to something because lack is of the devil. If you don't believe me, read the last book of the Bible. We're talking opulent, extravagant riches that are beyond the imagination. Yeah. That's where we're headed, folks. We started in paradise. We're ending up in paradise. Adam lost paradise. Jesus gained paradise. Yeah. This is the victory. Amen. Amen. This is the way to go. Yeah. When Jesus curses lack, guess what you and me are supposed to do? What does Ephesians 5.1 say? Be imitators of God as dear children. We curse lack. I curse lack in people's, you listen, I'm cursing lack in your life in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Lack is being cursed in the name of Jesus. I feel impressed to say that. And it says in Isaiah 55, 11, uh, right before it says that in 55, 11, a couple of verses before that, it says, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Yeah. Amen. You remember that scripture? That's a good one. And that's one of the best faith scriptures in the Bible. And I'll just go ahead and read it. I don't want to misquote it, but it says right here. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Verse 8, my ways are not your ways. Now think about it. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are greater than our ways. In verse 11, well, I'll read the verse 10. For as the rain comes down, the snow from heaven does not return there, but water the earth and, bring, and make it bring forth and bud, excuse me, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but accomplish what I please and prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Sent what? Sent what? What did you send? My words, he's saying. I've been sending my words. Yeah. You know, Jesus sent his words to the root system of that tree and it died because that's where the source of life was. Yeah. You know, the source of the devil's lies is in his symptoms, in his uh, uh, delusional pictures he tries to show us in our minds. Mm -hmm. Did you know that 99.9999% of the things you worry about never come to pass? But the devil will attack your mind. It's a pandemic, folks, that people are getting attacked in their minds like never before the last 10, 15 years. It's an assault yeah. of the devil, but that does not mean that the word of God is not true. It means the same today, yesterday, and forever. If we have authority over, over the devil when things are going smooth sailing, we have, the, we have authority over the devil right now when he attacks us. Yeah. Matter of fact, that's when you need to use it the most. And I yeah. tell you this, I'm not kowtowing to the devil and his idiotic thoughts of failure. I'm saying, like Jesus said, no, we prosper in everything we set our hand to. Yes. We're going to have what we say because God says that you're going to take over. And he said to occupy till I come. There's something to do before the return of Jesus. And that's to occupy. Occupy means to occupy. Yeah. That means we're going to be involved in this place right now. And we need to get up and start doing some occupying. Amen. Amen. And yeah. we're not going to occupy in the natural mind or in the way we do things in a very charismatic way. No, it's going to be by the Holy Ghost and by the yeah. Spirit of God and by the Spirit of your faith and my faith. Amen. Amen. So Praise these God. thoughts are the higher thoughts of God's. Yes. These are the thoughts that we, what, what we get from the Word of God when we hear the Word of God. And when the Word of God comes, faith gets thrown into your heart. It's infused yes. in your heart. Yes. God's Word is full of faith. Yes. And it brings you up out of this sullen, depressing, hopeless feeling to where it brings life and vision and expectation and hopefulness for the rest of your life. Hallelujah. But you got to get in the word. You got to stay in the word. You got to pray in the Holy Ghost. You got to worship God and start thanking him for all yes. the good things that are happening. Get yes. your mind off the negative. Get it on the word of God. The negative is of the devil. The positive and the faith things of, are of, the, of God. That's where we need to stay, and that's where I'm going. That's where my son's going. That's where my wife's going. That's where my daughter's going. That's where my son-in-law is going. That's where my granddaughter's going. That's where we're going, and we can all go together and live in victory because we are the church. Yes. And Jesus said in Matthew 16 that the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. Amen. Amen. I don't Amen. know about you, but I'm, getting, I'm preaching myself happy. I, yeah. I yeah. feel like I'm preaching it's to a thousand good. people right now. Yeah. But I tell you what. We have the victory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. And we're going over, not under. I don't yes. care what the devil says, we're going over. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Matter of fact, every time he reminds you of your past, why don't you just turn the tables on Mr. Slewfoot and say, no, wait, I, from what I remember, your future is a lot worse than anything I've done in my past. 
Your future is for, forever sealed and doomed. Yeah. You know what? He won't stick around very long. He'll, he'll scurry out the back door. Amen. Amen. So what are you going to do? We're going to hang into the Word of God. We're going to let the Word of God come out of our mouth night and day. Yes. Speak the Word of God night and day. Meditate Amen. in the Word night and day like yes. Joshua 1 8 talks about. We're going to have the victory when Hallelujah. we apply the faith principles. Amen. Come on. Glory be to God. God. I can't shut off right now. I'm all full. <laughs> I'm too excited to shut off. Amen. Amen. But this is what we're going to do. And we're going to reach people for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, well, I'm done. That's I, good. That's I better good stop. I better yes. stop. Amen. <laughs> hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Preach me happy. Ah, Praise hallelujah. God. Oh, that's so good. Good. Praise God. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, tune in next week for an uplifting, faith-filled message Amen. from the Word of God. We're so glad you tuned in this Amen. week. And uh, we bless you guys. And yeah, oh my gosh. You, you guys be blessed. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next time. <laughs>